Okay, I'm doing this video because I got a metric ass load of tweets asking me to do it, and I'm gonna do it, happily. Because if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with trash TV. I love it. I, I watched Big Brother growing up every single season. I watch every season of Love Island. Put strangers in a house together, and chances are I'm already somewhere making popcorn. So you can imagine how pumped I, I was when I realized Netflix is dipping their little piggies in the pool of trash TV. Oh, let's see what this is all about. It's like some producer or some buyer at Netflix realized that these shows are like cheap to produce and they get a lot of views and all you gotta do is cast dumb people and like something click. They were like, oh, this is a new frontier for us. They made The Circle, which I didn't watch, so I, did, I can't judge that one. They made um, Love is Blind which is a show about people dating, but they can't see each other. And boy, oh boy, do I wish I didn't see that steaming pile of garbage. But now they're back with a vengeance. Their new show is called Too Hot to Handle. This retreat is full of the sexiest people in the world. <laughs> Too hot. Too hot to handle. So they put all these hot, sexed up swipers in a house together and they say, okay, if you make it to the end, you get to split $100,000 amongst all of you guys. Now you may be thinking, oh, what, you just stay in a house for a little bit and you win 100K? Here's the catch, folks. Anytime anyone does anything sexual with anyone else on the show, money comes off the prize pool. Bada bing, that's the catch. So this is a show now about celibacy. You take all these sexed up swipers, which is what they called them in the trailer, sexed up swipers. It sounds like a slur for millennials. They take all these hot single people and they make them abstinent for an entire month, which is just such an absurd concept for a show, isn't it? It's like some producer was like, let's take one of the main reasons why people like garbage TV and just remove it. This is like if Girl Defined wrote a dating show. And I admit it, when I watched the trailer, I was like, holy shit, I'm pumped to watch this. It sounds like it would be a really entertaining show, and it is, for the first episode. By the way, this will contain spoilers, okay? I'm alerting you now. Spoiler alert! But it shouldn't really matter, because there's no reason to watch this show past the first episode anyways. So I'm kind of doing you a favor. So all these hotties get to the house, right? All these hot hotties. And uh, they're all sexed up, right? I mean, they're sexed up to the ears. You can practically see the sex pouring out of their ears because they're so sexed up. And naturally, as sexed up people do, they start flirting, right? There's even a cheeky kiss exchanged. There's some heavy petting. And then all of a sudden, Lana, which is the show's version of Alexa, it's like this little, little fucking thing that sits on, there's like a little Bluetooth speaker that sits on the table. Her name's Lana. She tells them that they can't fuck all of a sudden. They didn't know this when they were coming in. So then all the people are like, what? What? But we're so sexed up, what do we do? Holy heck, what? We can't smush? We can't fudge and smash in this house? You're telling me we can't dust each other's cheeks off right now? What are we gonna do? I'm so sexed up! I got sex porn out of my ears! This is gonna be the worst month ever! I'm so fucking sexed up, what do I do? And I feel for them. I feel for them, all right? Hot, dumb, young people, what else? is there for them to do but fuck. This is what makes the first episode fun to watch, is honestly just the reaction to, to them learning the rule. It's like somebody told them their parents died or something. You will have to abstain from sexual practices for the entirety of your stay. But then the second and the third episode is kind of where the show just collapses. And uh, it left me wondering why the show went so viral because everybody's talking about it right now, everybody. And so without further ado, I guess this is my official review of Too Hot to Handle, the most sexed up show on Netflix. You know, it's like, it's kind of like all these people thought they were gonna get laid in this house, but then they were conned out of it. It's like a lay con, lay con, hmm, that's funny. That sounds exactly like the sponsor of this video, which is Raycon. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon are fantastic earbuds. They're little buds you pop in your ears to listen to music, podcasts, Netflix shows, whatever you want. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of other premium earbuds on the market, but they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, six hours, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, 
and, and a new compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. They also come in fun new colors so you can match them to whatever gym fit you got going on. That's important these days. You gotta look good in the gym well, when we can go to gyms again. You should copy a pair of these if you're looking for something nice and effective that uh, you know won't cost you the same amount as the other top audio brands. So if you want your own set of these bad boys, just go to buyraycon.com slash Cody Co or click the link in the description for 15% off your order. Okay, back to the review. First of all, I wanna say right up front, the people that they cast on this show, they almost did too good of a job casting these people. They're hot and they're dumb, yes but they're almost too hot and too dumb. Here's a clip of them on uh, the Netflix YouTube channel trying snacks from different countries, just so you get a taste of what their personalities are like. Very orange. I say red, but... Matches my outfit. Are you of an orange outfit now? Are you sure this is edible? Try it. <laughs> what, why the fuck are you feeding me these? <laughs> there are a few of them that are really like genuinely charismatic, I agree, but some of them are just so insane. Like, how do you, you, you gotta, you, you know that you've casted people too dumb when two people leave the show because they don't like get it. <laughs> really? The first chick that leaves is this like blonde chick from Arizona, I think. My father. What language is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and she leaves because she just like can't stand being on the show. Like by the third episode, she's like, this is dumb. I don't get, like, I don't, why are we here? This is so stupid. I don't think I'm learning anything other than that everyone in this house is an idiot and I don't think Lana's process is doing anything for any of them either because they're all stupid and I really don't care about Lana's process. So they have to kick her off, otherwise she would just be like a detriment to the show. I just really haven't seen that before. I've seen people leave reality shows because, you know, they can't handle it emotionally or uh, they broke the rules or there's something going on at home, something like that. But no one has ever just left because they're like, uh, sucks. <laughs> Would rather be at a pool party in Tucson right now. Like, that's incredible. It's so funny. It's like, even shitty people are great in reality shows. But th this girl was just too shitty. And to her defense, yeah, I know it would suck to like, think that you're gonna get a summer full of sex and everything and, that, and to have that yanked away from you. But it's, you got cast on a Netflix show. It's a Netflix show. Just fucking suck it up and do the show. It's a job, just do the job. Because like, just on the off chance that it goes viral and you're a star then, right? Like for anyone that's applying for a show like this, you have to think that's probably the goal is attention. And so why wouldn't you just suck it up and just do the show and try to be your best in front of the camera just on the off chance that you'll get some attention from it? Because now the show's popped the fuck off and nobody's talking about her because she left. People are actually talking about her because she had one of the best moments in the show before she left. And that's because she made out with one of the other girls just to spite everyone else in the house and take money off the thing. So everyone learned that there was money out of the pool and they were all like, what the fuck, who did that? and I finally thought the show was gonna get good and things were gonna get spicy and fingers were gonna be pointed and conspiracies were gonna be made and everything. And then Lana, the fucking robot, just tells everyone who it was. It was Samantha. Lana, was it Haley and Francesca? Affirmative. Woo! Oh my God! And they're all like, what the fuck? And then she just leaves. And it's like, God, you fucked up the show just like the button in the in the other dating show did. What the fuck is with these robots fucking up these dating shows? The other dude that leaves is like this yoga looking dude. And, you know, come episode five or something, he's just like, all right, it's time for me to go. I've done my part here. I've done all, all I can do. Namaste. I have served a purpose. Unless I slept walk and fell into someone's okay. vagina, I know it's not me. And I am leaving on the best possible note ever. Dude, just stay, just stay, just do the fucking show. Why are you guys leaving? <laughs> it's a Netflix show, just, this is your 15 minutes of fame. Just, you might as well squeeze every last minute you can out of it, right? And then there's like this Irish chick that says like five things the whole show. Eight episodes and by the end you're like, wait, who the fuck is that? Was she, has she been there the whole time? Maybe it's just a testament to how bad the show concept is. The whole like lesson that they've crafted around the premise of the show is they want to help these sexed up single swipers learn how to develop real connections with other people. 
Because dating apps have fucked up the way we think about relationships, as if hooking up didn't exist in the past. They want the contestants to focus on who they really are underneath the, the boobs and the butts and the abs and the dicks and the balls and the butts. Which just feels like, I don't know, it just feels like they shoehorned it in because someone was like, it'd be funny if we made them not fuck. And someone was like, yes, that's great. That's hilarious. But we have to add some, like a wholesome message so that it has like meaning. Which is not the point of reality TV, you know? I don't... It's not supposed to have meaning. I'm, I don't watch... I don't want to watch someone learn a lesson. I don't want that. I want to watch people, you know, fist fight each other or something. With their genitals. In order to, like, drum up enough content, they make them do, uh, like, connection exercises and, like, workshops, they call them. So, exa for example, one of them, uh, all the guys write down their greatest fears on, like, a whiteboard. And then they rub mud all over each other and then like cry. Are you all ready to be free? Yes. And allow the other person to look at the poster. This is the best part is that uh, the yoga guy writes that his greatest fear is fear. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Is this a Catholic high school retreat? Like, what is this? It's this is supposed to be a fucking dating show. There's one moment in the show where, where one of the girls goes, it feels like we're in sex rehab. It's like so deep, man. It's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's it really like is. we're in sexual rehabilitation. Yeah. Yeah. We're all like. But with our minds? Yeah. yeah. Which is like, who wants to watch sex rehab? Or if that's what the show is supposed to be, then great. Call it sex rehab and find a bunch of people whose lives have been ruined by their sex addiction and put them in a house together. Now that's a show. TLC has probably already done that, honestly. That's what makes Love Island great. They just throw them in a house together and they're like, okay, go. Fuck, find love. Just be human. It goes for two months, and there's an episode every day, and there's enough content to make them all interesting. They shot Too Hot to Handle over four weeks. There's eight episodes, and it still feels like nothing happens. I can't even tell you most of their names. It's like they want all the contestants to say, We can't wait to make deeper connections! Or like, I, I, when I get home, I'm deleting Tinder. I'm no longer a swiper! But the show just keeps forcing this message of like growth and deeper connections. The whole thing ends up being like awkward and just like uneventful. So yeah, I don't really blame the blonde chick for leaving, to be honest. Like, how do you put 12 hot people in a house for a month and have eight boring episodes to show from it? I feel like vloggers could have made more shit happen. Hell, there's TikTok houses that are putting out better content than this house. Overall, I'm going to give, I don't know. Overall, I'm going to give this a pretty solid four out of 10. All right, there are funny moments for sure. They do put them in like sexual scenarios and it's kind of funny to watch them go, oh, what, we can't bang. I wish we could just bone it out right now. Just call me Dustin Cheeks because that's what I would be doing right now if we could. The whole deeper connection thing ruined it for me. I watch trash TV so I can see people that are hotter or dumber or richer or funnier than me be those things. Not so I can watch people try to become a better person because of a robot told them to. The best part about the whole thing is that the, the two couples that are still together from the show are the two that broke the rules and hooked up. So, I, I, guess, I guess the lesson is break the rules and fuck and have fun, baby. Thanks for watching my official review. I'm sorry if this was a little bit too serious, but I don't fuck around when it comes to TV like this, okay? <laughs> Take care, I'll see you next time. Peace.